Math 98, we're back at it. 9.5, dividing radicals. So we've talked about how to multiply them. So let's talk about how to divide them. And we've laid a lot of groundwork for this sort of thinking already. We've already done some of this. So I've got a couple things I want to divide here. So uh, 3 root 2 divided by 6. This is 3 times root 2, and that's divided by 6. So notice that like this is a term. I don't need to break this up into pieces. So what I can do is I can think of the 3 and the 6, right? Like these are both divisible by 3. So this is going to leave me root 2 over 2. Um, here with this one, this root 32, let's simplify that root 32 first. 32 is what? Uh, 16 times 2. So square root of 16 is 4. And again, these, these are multiplied together, this 4 and this root 2, so this is one term. So I can just simplify the, this part. 4 divided by 8 is 2. So this is also uh, root 2 over 2. All right, taking a look at these ones. Now, these are different. These are, these are um, addition and subtraction separating this term. So the 18 is divided by the 12, and the root 48 is divided by 12. And when we reduce this, we're going to leave it as a single fraction, not break it into pieces. So uh, first thing I think I'll do is I'll reduce this thing, 48. 48, I think, might be divided, divisible by 16. It is 16 times 3. So square root of 16 is 4. So let's think of this as 18 minus 4 root 3. And now I've got this 18, I've got this 4, and this 12. I'm looking for something that goes into each of these three things. And that isn't divisible before. These are all divisible by 2. So you don't necessarily have to do this step, but I want to do it just to clear up what we're doing. I'm going to factor 2 out of there. And now notice this 2 is still multiplied by that. So I can do this reducing right here, and I get 9 minus 2 root 3 over 6. Another way to think about it is I, I, I divided a 2 out of each of the terms. All right, let's think about this one, 2, 75. That's 25 times 3. So square root of 25 is 5. That's a 5 root 3 over 20. Everything here, 5, 10, and 20 are divided, divisible by 5. So I'm going to take a 5 out of everything. So 2 plus 1 root 3. And if I divide that by 3, it's a 4. Again, if, if, you, if you like this method, do it that way. Factor the 5 out, and then think about 5 and the 20. So I have a radical divided by a radical. Notice that that's the same as that, right? So I could see if this way, if there's something I could do here to simplify this first and then worry about the radicals, these are both divisible by 3. So this would be the same as the square root of 9 over 25. Well, oh, that's nice. And then I can square root the pieces. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 25 is 5. You know, if you didn't combine it that way, if you're like, I'm going to simplify this 27, which is a 3 root uh, 3, and simplify this 75, which is a 5 root 3, notice the root 3s divide out, and we still get there to the 3 fifths. But I think in a lot of cases... Not always, but like in this case, it's going to be a lot less work to simplify this first. Like 18 divided by 3 is 9. x to the 7th divided by x is x to the 6th. And now when I square root that, square root of 9 is 3. And remember when I have a power, I can take half of it. x cubed. Similarly with this one, um, 147 divided by 3. I'm, I'm just going to cheat. I mean, use my root resources. 49. Oh, that's, that's nice. So this is a 49. A divided by A cubed uh, leaves me an A squared. Sorry, I forgot about the denominator there. B to the 8th over B to the 4th leaves me a B to the 4th up top. Square root of 49 is 7. Square root of B to the 4th is B squared. Square root of A squared is A. And there it is, simplified. Now, one thing that is kind of an antiquated rule, but we are still clinging to it. I was hoping that sometime in my life it would be gone, but um, 
it's called rationalizing the denominator. And so there's a, a certain form numbers to be written in. It, it comes to it comes to us from pre-calculator days, um, but we want the denominator to always be um, like a whole number. So it shouldn't have a radical down here. So I want to get this out of here. So here's here's how I do it. I want to multiply this by something that gets rid of that radical, that radical, the square root of two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by this. And when I multiply by this, notice this has a value of one, right? Like this is just a big one. So when I multiply by one, I don't change the value of it. I'm just changing the form. One times the square root of two is square root of two. Square root of two times square root of two is two. One divided by root two and root two over two, they are the exact same thing. And I could check that on a calculator. So notice one divided by square root of two or square root of two, close off the parentheses, divided by two. Well, looks like I made a mistake. Ah, forgot to put the two in there. Same value. Oh no, I did it again. <laughs> Sorry. There it is, same value. So rationalizing the denominator is getting the radicals out of the denominator. So four over the square root of three, I don't like the radical down there. Well, maybe I actually don't, I don't mind it so much, but I'm supposed to get it out of there. So I'm gonna multiply by this version of one. Notice that gives me a four root three over root three times root three is three. Now this problem's a little different. The five's fine. Like the five can sit there and do whatever the heck it wants. The root three is the thing that's giving me grief. So I'm gonna multiply this one by root three over root three again. Six root three up top. Five times root three times root three, that's a three. Five times three is 15. This one's just similar. Uh, I, For some reason, I'm enamored with root threes. I'm just gonna change, change this to like a five just so that I'm doing a different thing. The two's good, it can stay by that version of one again that's a one i'm changing the form of this not the value two times root top five times root five root five times root five is five so that gives me a 10. i notice if i had something like this the square root of five twelfths that's the square root of five over the square root of 12. get that 12 out of there so multiply by root 12 over root 12. five times 12 is what 60 over 12. I can simplify this 60. 60 is uh, 4 times 15. So this is 5 times 2 root 15 over 12. This divides out giving me a 6. 6 root 5, oh sorry, 5 root 15 over 6. You know, the way uh, to think about this, this root 5 over root 12, before I did all this, I could have simplified this. This is 4 times 3. So this is 2 root 3, right? So I could have multiplied by root 3 over root 3. You can see how I'd get to the same spot doing it that way. So if you want to simplify these first, that may save you some of the larger number arithmetic work to do. Now these problems are a little different. 4 over 4 plus the square root of three. This is ad addition down here. So like if I just multiply by root three over root three, this is not the right thing to do. It doesn't make it go away because it gets distributed to both of them. So what I need to find is something that I can multiply four plus root three by that will get rid of the square roots. And if you remember from last lecture, it's the conjugate of it. You can switch the sign. If I have this four plus root three, if I multiply that by 4 minus root 3, difference of squares relationships, I won't have a middle term. So again, I'm still multiplying by 1, but I pick this number strategically so that watch what happens. That gets distributed into there, 16 minus 4 root 3 over, uh, let's see, 4 times 4 is 16, 4 root 3, negative 4 root 3 drops out. Um, and then root 3 times negative root 3 is minus 3, so that's a 13. There it is. So um, when we do this division again, if this is addition subtraction, I'm going to choose the conjugate. This is 1 minus root 5, so I'm going to use 1 plus root 5. Opposite sign. This is a, this is a value of 1. So 
I don't want to um, I don't want to change the value of it, just the form. Let's distribute that into there. 8 plus 8 root 5 over 1 times 1 is 1. Middle term drops out. Negative root 5 times negative root 5 uh, times positive root 5 is negative 5. 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Oh, interesting. I can divide these both by negative 4. That gives me negative 2 minus 2 root 5. All right, so sometimes we have to do an extra step. Go a little bit further. All right, let's take a look at this thing. I feel like I may need a little bit of space for this. So let's multiply by the conjugate square root of x plus square root of 5. And so I've got the conjugate right over itself. So that's a 1, again, multiplying by 1. Middle term is going to drop out on this multiplication, right, because it's negative that and positive that. Square root of x times x is x. And middle term drops out. Negative root 5 times root 5 is minus 5. And let's do this multiplication. Root x times root x is x. I have root 5 times x, and then root 5 times x again. So I have two of these root 5x's. Root 5 times root 5 is 5. So x plus 2, root 5x plus 5. And there it is. Hey, get your practice in on this division. Uh, either message me with questions or post them in the forum.